Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at novel AIs and the big changes they've brought with Keira, which is the a brand new AI model, as well as the new instruct mode, which allows you to basically tell the system what you'd like it to do and it tries to generate based on what you've described. So for those of you who are not familiar with novel AI and you're kind of coming into this video sort of blind, what novel AI is is basically a tool that allows you to write stories together with an AI, where you can actually alternate between writing something and having AI jump in, then have you jump in kind of thing. For example, I was walking my dog, dog one morning, and I noticed the air had a strange, and then if I press control enter, the AI is going to start grabbing onto that sort of a thing like that. Now, this got a little excessive already because um, we've gone right to Bomb Squad, kind of a thing like that, and that's sort of one of the fun things about it. Now, what makes this tool so much more different than a lot of other generative AIs out there is I can actually come over here and says, uh, you call, you have to call the Bomb Squad. We'll have to call the Mob Squad. You know, you can come in here and actually adjust a mob. I don't want to be bothered with something like that. And then again, if you rerun it, it takes the new changes that you put into it and works it right in there. <laughs> and as you could see, it got a little weird pretty right. So the big change they've added is they have a new instruct mode. Now instruct is, can act, be accessed by two different methods. There's the actual model itself, which you can select up here, or you can simply order up a specific instruction and it will follow it directly. So to activate an instruction, you simply press uh, shift, give yourself a left brace, and it will automatically switch to this little mode right here. Now this mode is actually going to be different if you're in editor version one versus editor version two. Now you simply instruct you with the AI, what you like to do. So for example, describe, the appearance of an old, worn out, oh, actually, that's not the correct worn out, Victorian mansion. So we got a couple little details there. We'll go fix this. So now if I send this over to the AI, what it will do is it'll actually try to generate the information that you've done based on that. Now, one of the things you got to watch out for, and uh, this is one of the things you'll find out, is when you're using this particular tool, it's going to try to use what already exists first before it's actually going to start working backwards and sort of integrating everything that already comes into existence. Now, the interesting piece here is notice my lack of capitalization actually carried over here kind of a thing. Now, notice we've got a really, really nice detail here. Exposing the uh, the ornate dealing is missing. So if I wanted to, of course, uh, one of the things I like to do here is I actually can increase the output length a little bit. So let's uh, jack that up a bit, send it back over to the AI and see what it does. Nice. Now notice here that I'm just describing. I'm not saying that I'm walking up. I'm not saying that I'm doing anything along the lines of, you know, this character did this or this character did that. There's none of that at this particular point. It's just describing what we have. Now, one of the things I've discovered that makes a big difference is you want to eliminate that description in there because you're going to have issues later on where that instruction is going to interfere with the other instruction, which is going to interfere with the other instruction, which is going to interfere with the other instruction. So now we can go ahead and keep going with the story. Continue the scene. Scene where you... Uh, approach the mansion. Approach the mansion. Holding a card. A, uh, let's see here. A greeting card. Now let's see. A card in your hand with an invitation to enter. So now let's go ahead and run it. Now notice here that it took our general style that we used from the previous paragraph here and it actually kept going with it but it actually started integrating the main part of our story here. Now notice we are suddenly in second person and it's because I said you approach, it's a little bit different. Now one of the things I can do here is I can actually backspace this out and I can change the entire story by switching that to the word I. So now you can say, as I approach the mansion, I'm surprised to see the front door had been replaced with a new sturdy oak door. And of course, uh, Cleo down here, good work. You can be quite the handyman if you put your mind to it. Uh, Cleo's hilarious, by the way. I left her on because she cracks me up every time. I'm making it vulnerable. But notice that the general information that existed up here is the general information that we have down here. The other thing you probably observe is the fact that I have this little detail in here that the AI has not actually gotten to yet. If I actually click on the send button here, you'll notice that it's gonna keep going with the same general style of here. You know, you sit there, I'll go ahead and I'll give it another run. You can see we're starting to have the air repaired and swept. The invitation to the was a rare opportunity and a glimpse, and now it finally hints this particular piece away. Now, one of the things you got to watch out for, as I was saying before, if I say continue the scene, where at another location, someone gets an alarm that I entered the mansion, for example. Now, watch what happens here. Notice here that this busted. Now, notice you have a few days later, and notice this does not recognize the split in scene at all. It's actually trying to combine these two instructions simultaneously with each other. So I'm actually going to bang that out. I'm going to go back up here, eliminate that, and then send it back over to the AI again. 
Now you'll sit here that it's completely forgetting kind of a thing like that. And it's actually called me directly. It's really, really struggling with this particular instruction because even though I've eliminated the earlier instruct module, it's still expecting to go ahead and finish up all the stuff that is generated up here, down here. So in order to fix that, we have to get a little bit more serious here. We have to tweak this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one of these and I'll go ahead and add a scene break. Now this is interesting here. So if I send this over, the AI is gonna be a little bit different. And you notice we've introduced a new character. We've introduced a different location. And we go ahead and I get this little warning on thing here. What are you doing? Just walking the street away. I just got it from all from the old Canary Mansion. So now it recognizes the fact that we split those two things. Now, one of the really, really powerful uses of this tool other than being able to describe things is you could basically have it tell your entire story for you. So if I want to, I'm gonna go ahead and back this out a little bit. I'm actually gonna switch modes. Oh, by the way, if you just press the uh, open brace here, if you hit that when you're in no module mode, you're only gonna have instruction mode for a little while. If you wanna use instruction mode the entire time, what you actually have to do is to come over here and set this to instruct experimental. And what this will do is this will actually enhance that significantly. So now I can go in here and I'll write the scene. And as I write the scene, I approach the mansion. Mansion and am greeted at the front door by a strange looking gentleman, gentleman carrying a white hat, Persian cat. So now we've gone ahead and provided a little bit of details here. And now when I go ahead and hit send, again, since I don't have that scene break here, it's gonna start running with it. And now that I'm in instruct mode, what it's going to try to do is it's going to try to take exactly what I wrote here and do exactly what I wanted here. Now, what did you notice? You'll notice it mentioned nothing about me approaching the mansion itself. What it did is it simply took this and it basically kept going after this particular point, which is one of the problems that you're gonna encounter when you're using instruction mode. So one of the easiest ways to fix this is you can actually push it. I stood at the uh, um, base, the main gate, and stared. Oh, bless. Oh, I gotta be careful here. Oh, because this is stared. We're gonna be past tense here. Ba -ba -ba, stared. The sun was sitting behind the building, casting a warm orange glow over the grounds. I pushed open the gate and walked up the path, my feet crunching on the gravel beneath me. As I approached the porch, a figure emerged from the shadows. It was a strange looking gentleman carrying a white Persian cat under his arm. Now notice, because I basically kicked the thing off, the instruct now augmented everything that I basically was typing there just a few moments ago. Now you'll see here, the man looked me up and down, his eyes glinting, his thing appears like this. Now if you keep running with this, let's go ahead and I'll let it keep running here. I'll go ahead and do 600 characters. What's gonna happen is, it's going to attempt to take this instruction and keep going with it. Uh, one of the interesting problems you're actually going to encounter every once in a while if you do this, and again, I'm not gonna run the example all the way down so you can kind of see it kind of go ripping here. I gotta keep an eye out down here to make sure like nothing inappropriate pokes up for YouTube because, oh boy, it will happen from time to time. But what will happen is we'll say, I hope you enjoyed my story. You can get access to the story, do, 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 kind of a thing like that because basically it's not 100% sure where to go. Uh, the big thing that I like about the instruct mode is it actually is really useful for other purposes as well. So let's go ahead and now bang all this out and remove it. So I'm actually gonna switch back to the regular mode. If you're in normal module and you hit that brace, the left brace there, again, that's uh, the one where your bracket key is, so the right P key on the keyboard. When you're doing this, you've got to well, keep in mind that it can be used for GPT kind of stuff too. So write a list of three, uh, let's say five interesting names for a cat, why not? So let's go ahead and press run. And what it will do is it'll actually do what you told it to do. Since there's no basic information here that we had up here that's kind of telling us the style of the story, it acts as a general, almost like a chat GPT kind of a thing. Now, Cleo, Casper, Cinnamon, Cali, Cupcake, I like that a lot. Um, starting with each letter of the alphabet. So now again, you can get a little more sophisticated here and this gets a little more interesting, but you'll notice it's actually smart enough to recognize this is what I wanted it to do. And it's actually done a great job here. Okay, who names their cat a wisteria? I mean, come on. But this is so cool here because it kind of ignored this part, but it did recognize this part correctly. So it actually works great. Now, the reason I like this is you can actually run two of these going at a time. Um, create the character, character, of Charles uh, uh, Wayne, a wealthy businessman who specializes in uh, nuclear reactor technology. Now, if I run this just as it is, um, you're, what you're gonna do is you're going to get a little description of our gentleman, Charles Wayne. And now one of the cool things about this little detail that you're actually gonna be getting here is it's gonna kind of break it down and sort of explain things. Obviously, I've got Wayne Tech here, so uh, somebody's accidentally Batmaned on top of my uh, X-Men here. 
but that's okay. That's not that big of a deal. Now, one of the cool things here is that we have a nice little piece of prose. And one of the things that's so great about this is we can actually take this and create our own lore book intro. Again, control right click here. And I can come over here and say generate lore. And I can literally toss this in here if I wanted to. I could even copy paste this right into my lore page itself if I wanted this to be something that works. Now, this is not as usable as it could be, especially if you're doing a character development. So what you can do instead is you can come up here and add more details. Describe the character in terms of appearance, background, a, oops, background, background, <laughs> age, uh, let's see here, personality, whoops, I don't need to print that out, I don't think, personality, and uh, let's see, we can have a little bit of fun, and let's see here, style, let's do that, so now if I feed this over here, just like a regular GPT, it'll actually generate it exactly in the same method that we had before, the only difference here is you're going to notice that it's going to start breaking these components down, and I'll let it run a little bit further here so we get a little more information here. And this is all fantastic stuff to use. Now, if I would actually take this and hit Control C here, let's go over my uh, lure book real fast just to demonstrate how useful this is. If I now come down here and paste this, and I come down here and say Charles, Charles Wayne, if I do Mr. Wayne, kind of a thing like that, I now have some fantastic information I can now utilize inside of my story. So now if I wanted to, I can go ahead, uh, let's go ahead and create another character here. I'll create a, um, let's see, uh, I'll do Cynthia, uh, let's see here, we can have some fun. Cynthia Powell, why not? I can't spell Cynthia to save my life here. Uh, let's, see, da, 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 da. let's see who is a business woman, a wealthy business woman who works in the materials sector. Now, if I run this okay, it's going to start building this directly. You can see with background of chemistry and business, it was able to pull that little detail here. We have some interesting things about a commanding presence here. Uh, she's you know, 45 years old, which is excellent. Entrepreneur, we have some great things. Amassed a fortune over flaunted. Important research and development. Fantastic. So what I'm going to do is, uh, this is super nice, but I actually just want this part of this. So now if we go back over to the lore book here, create a new entry. I'll do up, control V. We'll do Cynthia, I'm not going to spell this right at all, uh, Cynthia Powell, Miss Powell. Now watch this. Because we've created all this, whoop, did I accidentally? That's definitely something I would do. Uh, Cynthia and Charles, C names today. So now that that data has actually been created, the program is smart enough to know to take that lore book entry and integrate it. So now if I wanted to, for example, create a scene where... Charles and Cynthia meet at a major business conference. Conference, and they strike up a conversation about the pros and cons of free market capitalism. Why not? So now, if I run this, you'll have to see this. And one of the most incredible things here is all the details we just generated in our lore book are the details we're pulling from. And it's one of these things that now that we have two characters that we've generated and tossed into our lore book, now that we grab the actual instruction model and say, go do this, it has more context to work from, which is really, really incredible. If you actually take a look real quickly at last context, you can see here that the actual information that I asked it to do is down here. You can see my braces. But this is all those lore book entries that get shoved into the top. Now, I have the opus level here. So one of the nice things about having such a high level is you get 8,192 tokens wide. And you can see just how much information I have left at my disposal, which is plenty. You can see I'm barely using any here. So it actually works really, really well. So, of course, I'm very curious to see how this plays out. Now, notice it's just kind of running with this. And it's sort of interesting. Again, I'm not making any comments on this. Uh, my two characters are making this because, obviously, they made their wealth kind of a thing like that. Now, the cool thing here is let me bang that out. And uh, let me go actually replace that. Now, if I let the scene run, watch what happens. Now, notice it's basically rip, going along, going along, going along, going along, kind of a thing. You can see that they had this little piece here. You can tell this is, I always call this the GPT uh, sort of signature whenever you get these kind of sentences right there. Now, you'll notice nothing changed. 
Uh, they've had a perfectly successful piece. Uh, nothing's been a little unusual in any way, in any form. And the reason for this is because remember when you are in the AI module for not instruct, I'm just going to straight up, you only get about a thousand letters. And a thousand letters basically got us to here. So even though I changed the original instruct, nothing changed. So what I'll do this time is I'll go ahead and uh, I'm banging this out just a little bit. And let's go ahead and change our module back to instruct mode and go ahead and run that again. Now notice everything changed. And that's because once we've exceeded that 1000 in normal mode, it stops telling us where to go. But in instruct mode, you can see that it starts to keep running here. Now the interesting thing, I'm gonna have to agree to disagree. And then suddenly we have ourselves a really, really heated argument right here, which is sort of ripping along on itself. Now, <laughs> <laughs> that escalated quickly. But anyway, that's part of the fun here. So that's one of the big differences between the two modes when you're using it. Instruct is great if you need to quickly describe something. So like, for example, uh, describe how a uh, sudden sound from the lobby surprises the two conversationalists. Now, the reason this is so useful is if you need that one little tiny detail as I continue the conversation, notice that it was aware that we still had the conversation. Like this context was still valid when we suddenly jumped in here and kind of uh, did this one of these things, drawing everyone's attention. So that's one of the best uses for it. Now, there's one more piece that uh, we're going to take a look here. By the way, I've eliminated all my instructions here, and now it's just running with the conventional context that you have right here. Yep. Oh my God. I hate it when it does this. I hate it when it does this. This is literally my least favorite thing that all GPTs do. Just tell me, you know, show me, don't tell me. So one of the important things here is we have our config presets. And now for those of you not familiar with those with novel AI, the big thing you got to know about them is they're basically going to control a lot of the variables behind the scene that are going to cause your story to kind of go in different directions. For example, under default here, we have everything from carefree, which honestly I spend most of my time on, but there's actually one down here that says, keeps things on track, handles instruct well, which is this thing called fresh coffee, which gives you even more direct control. The problem I find with fresh coffee as a preset is it does a fantastic job with instruct, but it's not creative. So what will happen is, uh, for example, let me go ahead and I'll strike all this real quickly here, just as an example. If I set this to fresh coffee, I'll write a scene where Charles and let's say Charles and Cynthia meet for the first time. Now watch what happens here. We have a basic conversation. <laughs> well, that escalated. So what'll happen a lot of times too is then the fresh coffees who run into a situation where your scene will last to about here. And says, you met, they shook hands and it'll just stop. So one of the nice things that we have going here is we have a ton of context that we're working with. If we weren't working with context, this could be a lot more chaotic. The other kind of preset that you're going to see, if you actually scroll down even further, is you have this thing called blended coffee, which is the same thing as fresh coffee, but the difference is it uses the CFG method for its a different type of options. So if you actually scroll down here, you have this thing called CFG scale. If you've not seen the CFG scale, it's a super duper tool, and basically it's a different kind classifier, free guidance. It's it's interesting. Um, it basically compares everything it typed out. I mean, it gives you great little detail real quickly here that sort of breaks it down for you. And the upside, the downside to it is it makes things more consistent at the cost of being slower. So again, we can come up here. Uh, da, da, da. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. Let's go ahead and bang that out here. Let's leave it on CFG mode, the blended coffee. Let's go ahead and fire that away. Now, the interesting thing is notice how much slower this is because what it's doing now is it's taking its inputs and basically doing two runs of it, comparing the two, and then going with the one that seems to make more sense to everything that is kind of piece. Now, this is so fascinating. I kind of want to see where this story goes already. So the last thing we're going to take, of course, is a look at what they've changed with the text-based adventure mode. Now, one of the things they've done that's absolutely fantastic here, and I'm super duper excited to see this, Ah, this runs into, you just got to press backspace enough times. If you were to go back to our original one and come over here, you'll notice there's a switch mode between text-based adventure and regular adventure mode. So now the cool thing that's so awesome about this is you can just actually actively switch between the two modes whenever you need to actually do any of the different work that you want to do. So if I wanted to kind of kick it off, uh, describe the Victorian mansion that you are about to enter. 
Now, the cool thing here is now if I just grab this out of the blue, it's going to go ahead and generate a lot of critical details that we need to use here. And again, you can see all of these cool things that are coming through. Oh, what do you do now? The mansion is yours to explore. So now if we wanted to knock on the door, something like that, for example, it's going to run. It creaks open and says, oh my god, I want to see where we're going with this kind of a thing. Now, the cool thing here is we can have some fun. Um, a tall man. And on the... Oh... Now, if we wanted to, we can even come in here now and actually throw in our instructions. Uh, when you enter the room, the mansion, Charles greets dramatically. Now, if I do that, I can actually punch that in. Uh, Charles greets you with an enthusiastic wave. I'm glad you came in. Well, the beautifully decorated and da da sales intense. So tell me, why'd you come here? Well, I heard, <laughs> there's our lore book entry. And that's one of the reasons why this tool is so incredible to use. Now that you can start feeding yourself with your own information and then coming back and re-entering and then entering it again. And then of course you can use other types of GPTs as well in order to punch things in. What I found is, especially with the Kera, that I'm a lot less reliant on ChatGPT. It's just, it's so much easier to kind of fine tune your experience here, more so than you can over in the regular one. But they are great, especially when you work them together. If you're looking for that one tip that's going to be the, um, you know, I have such a hard time uh, keeping everything on track. You've got to give it enough information to know what the track is for it to stay on track. I know that's one of those things that's obvious, but it's challenging. Now, one of the cool things, by the way, is if I actually come up here and go like this, I'm back in storyteller mode and just like that. And you can see your little details here. But other than that, keep writing and enjoy.